Hello guys, I'm Frank Battiston, your Powertail TV host. I'm here with Anthony Cruz, with Nathaniel Matnik and his wife Christy to talk a little bit about Removed and Removed 2. Could you tell us a little bit, like a summary about what the film is about? Removed is the emotional journey of a little girl who is taken from her abusive birth home and placed in the foster care system. <laughs> I wish someone would tell me it's gonna be okay. Nathaniel and I were in foster parent training classes because we were considering doing foster care. They showed us words and phrases and sentences that kids in foster care wish adults knew about what it feels like to be a child in foster care. And that just inspired us to make a short film. So at the time we had already entered a speed making film competition. So we decided, oh, let's make that the content. You do not really hear or see or feel. You don't remember my story. Nathaniel told me out of the interview that um, you, you wrote it in two hours. I did like a ton of research on the child's perspective of the experience in foster care. So there was like only a couple of books that had been written that kind of even dealt with the topic at all. And then when the contest started and they gave us our like topic that we had to go through, I was like, okay, here we go. Did you know you wanted the film to be in her perspective out of the spot. And that was for us the whole like point of, of doing the film. In so much of becoming foster parents, the feedback you, you tend to get is, gee, that sounds really hard. It's like, well, obviously it's hard for the adult, but think of how much harder it is to be that kid. Well, and because we felt like when we have seen foster care depicted in media, it's always from the adult's perspective and it's always showcasing like the negative behavior that children are exhibiting. Don't, don't touch me. That one day, no! maybe, I, you. I, I feel you. normal. I hate you. I hate you. That I won't always be alone. Something that I really liked about the film is when she's put in like a stereo and just like breaks it. Who planned it? <laughs> I think yeah. like three days before shooting, I went to a thrift shop and I said, all right, I'm looking for something to break. Yeah. Well, there you go. That's, that's cheap. Yeah. Yeah. We wanted to show her doing these stereotypical bad behavior, but when you see it, you feel bad for her. You know, like I want you to see this and like recognize like this is why she's doing it. How did you get the locations you got? There's just friends and family who are available to let us use their place and it was yeah it was just the the availability was there so you know tailor what you're doing to what's available to you and find a place that doesn't really have to be changed too much you were telling me also about the cop situation and how they entered in that scene and you were scared because everybody was going to probably kick you out i get nervous during loud scenes that jordan the dad or boyfriend was like screaming so loud. It was intense. Yeah. It was really loud. Yeah. yeah. This is my effing house. And, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, forward. neighbors are gonna hear us. Thankfully, the cops were real cops. Mm -hmm. So I figured, well, that will help us. If the cops come, then, <laughs> then they can interact <laughs> with the cops. And, you know, uh -huh. then I know Kyle would be like, well, <laughs> unless, we can be, uh, job, unless, right? unless that, yeah. But then it was funny because they'd yell cut and then it'd be like, happy. And he'd be like joking with Abby. And uh -huh. Yeah. It'd be like they just cut right out of it. They were able to trigger yeah. fast. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's the power of slow motion. It is. Anything it's slow in motion. slow motion. It's like, ooh. Yeah. You were telling me that you met Abby because she was your neighbor? Abby uh, was our neighbor. She lived just a few doors down and our kids would play together. She doesn't have any acting experience, but she's got a really interesting face. It's, it's just like a really intriguing like look. It's like makes you want to look at it. And so I'm like, well, that's a great quality to have on camera. Well, we're friends with her parents. We asked her parents, would you be okay with uh -huh. her? <laughs> she, of course, was like, yeah, like she loved it. How do you get the idea to do the second part? I don't know, I kind of felt like it was something that seemed like there was a demand for it and people were really wanting more of the story. Part one really had this overview of the story and this one I really felt had the details of the life and what to expect from this little girl who, you know, who was in and out of this foster care. Than would send me emails, just responses of people who 
who were in the foster care and what they felt like. They weren't able to grasp or even put it into words until they saw the film. And it was like, that's how I've been feeling for 30 years. That's how I've been feeling for 15 years. You two co-directed both films. So we co-directed the second film together. Mm -hmm. On the first film, I asked Tony to do it with me. And when I asked you to do it, I said, I don't want to do it unless you're doing it with me. And I directed it. And Tony was so much my right hand man in it. I feel like it would not have been the film it was if it weren't for Tony that it just felt like silly to not say like, all right, we're basically directing this together. I think one of my favorite moments on Remove Part One was when she sees her brother come out of the social worker's car. And we shot that a bunch of times and it, it was like, okay. And then Tony's like, let me, let, why don't you let me try? Tony's like talking her through, he's like, all right, who's in the car? You know, and she's like responding. He's like, oh my goodness, it's your little brother. And like moments like that, where Tony's just like so good at getting that out of her. I am lovable. Worthy of care. And that glimmer of light, it makes all the difference. The glimmers of light give me hope that someday my summer will come. For the second part of the film, what are you going to add and it's going to be different and can people expect? The Remove Part 1 is basically the story of survival. Her goal in that is just surviving. And this one is really more a story of overcoming where she's still in this place and it's like how do you learn to live within that. For people who haven't watched the first film then they are inspired to watch the second film, what can they do? So you can find Removed on our website which is removedfilm.com. It's also on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash removed film. Removed uh, part two, we're actually putting it in the hands of the organizations and the people who really helped us make it in the first place, um, where they're hosting screenings at theaters or churches or community venues. And then after that, we'll be putting the film up online for people. Um, and so we're really excited. One thing that we really love is just getting feedback from people about how they were touched by it. Please, you know, removefilm.com, you can contact us there. Mm -hmm.